Good morning, good afternoon, and welcome to the webinar. My name is Liz Fraley, and I'll be your host today. This morning, we are very excited. With us today is Simon Taylor from PTC. He's the product manager for XML publishing and layout applications within the Arbitex business unit. At PTC, Simon spends his time thinking about putting content on pages. If your content is already in XML, then your content is tagged and structured for reuse, and now you're ready to produce high-quality designed outputs for things like catalogs, brochures, data sheets, or advertisements. And today, Simon is here to talk about taking the steps along that path to make it happen. Today, he's going to talk about automating high-quality outputs with Arbitex. Now, I'll turn my presentation over to today's presenter, Simon Taylor. Simon, it's all yours. Thank you very much, Liz. So um, when Liz and Janice asked me to do this presentation, my first immediate thoughts were sort of to focus on catalog kind of output. Um, and I don't mean illustrated parts catalogs. By that, I mean product catalogs. So these are generally the marketing output that people would generate to, to sell their products. So you can already see that there's a, a direct um, integration that you would have, pulling information out of um, Windchill and putting it onto a page um, and you know, populating your content from that. But what I want to talk about is how um, I tend to look at how that information gets onto the page in the first place. And I'm going to be concentrating mostly on, on the APP engine. Um, although Styler has got some capabilities that would benefit this area, the APP engine is really the tool of choice for doing this kind of thing, so I'm going to concentrate on, on that. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is have a look at some of the requirements around the creating catalog type output. These are the things which are important um, for creating that kind of output. Then I'm going to have a look at some examples. I've got three examples that I'm going to um, look at and try to relate those requirements in the uh, first section with uh, these the examples and how, how we try to address those things. Then I'm going to have a look at um, APP capabilities. We'll have a quick look at um, APP formatting some some uh, catalog content, and then just to give everybody a reminder of how APP fits into the Arbitex ecosystem at the end, so that you know how to join all the dots up, how to, you know, to get your content out of Winchell or out of the um, content management system through editor, through publishing engine into APP so you understand all that stuff again. So product catalogs, as I said, they tend to be marketing type documents. They, they're very um, customer focused. They, the idea is that you're presenting information, whether it's technical information or sort of more prose type um, information to the user in such a way that it's um, it's visually appealing and it makes them want to go out and buy your products. Now, the, the information that you're presenting, um, as I sort of described here in the input section, normally it's going to be XML. In the vast majority of the cases, it's going to be XML. But sometimes people don't have XML. Some people have um, other types of content. You might have an XML um, structure, but you also want to pull information from other places. So you might want to pull information directly from a database, whether that's a content management system like Winchill or whether that's a, you know, another kind of database. You might have non-structured content or unstructured content. Um, that could just be like a text file sitting on a file system that you want to include in there. Um, there'll be other supporting content, things like pricing information. Pricing information might, is unlikely to be inside Winchell. It might come from another, another source. Um, and it might be special in that you might want to use, um, as an example, what we're going to be using later on, you might want to have like, the same text content, but you might want to switch the pricing information uh, between versions of the catalog that you're producing. So you're producing stuff in uh, US dollars and Canadian dollars. The pricing in different regions might be different. So you might just want to want to change that, but leave all the rest of the text the same without having to reformat. So that's one piece of supporting content that you might want to, uh, to include in your catalog. Obviously, there's going to be front and back matter which might not form the, the main part of the, the XML that you're formatting, so you want to be able to pull that from somewhere. Something that I describe here is non-product information. You know, that could be uh, legal or regulatory information. Um, it could be um, 
just information about the company, all that kind of stuff. Again, stuff which isn't in the main piece of XML that you're formatting. It's supplementary, it's supporting information that helps you um, format the whole catalog in one hit rather than having to join it together. It's a PDF later on. And then, they, then you've got all the different variations of that content that you're formatting. So I've already spoken a little bit about different currencies and different pricing information for different, uh, different regions. You might have um, language variations as well. And one of the things that people who are producing high quality outputs such as catalogs like to do is print only one set of the color plates, um, for example. Um, if you're familiar with uh, full color printing, you know that you might produce, produce all the, um, the color plates for the graphics. Um, Producer is only one, but then overlay it to the different uh, black content for different languages. Obviously, if you're producing the text in black, then that could be on a different plate. You might use a spot color for um, the content as well, and um, just add that to the, the four colors that are produced for the, um, the, model, the, the graphical content. If you produce one set of color plates, you're going to save some costs there by just producing a different set of black plates, and APP allows you to do that kind of stuff. Obviously, different regions of different regula regulatory, regulatory, however you say that, um, information. So you would want to swap that in, in and out of the document, pull that from different places inside your inside your system. So there's, all in all, there's quite a few challenges around um, getting the right input. So you might have the X, the main body of your content, the XML, come from one source, but you're going to be pulling lots of information from uh, different sources. Uh, APP is particularly good at that. So, um, you can load in as many content streams as you like. You can have unstructured content as well as structured content. You can also interrogate uh, databases and use uh, HTTP request support information from other places too. And then you want to look at um, the formatting and the layout that's um, going into producing your producing your um, product catalog or your marketing information. Obviously, accuracy of layout is very very important. If you spend a you know, tens of thousands of dollars producing a, a nice brand identity. You don't want that to be ruined by um, poor color reproduction or um, you know graphics looking poor in your marketing information. So accuracy is very, very important. The quality of the, um, the layout and the typography is also very important. You know, this stuff is representing your company. So you don't want it to look um, <laughs> you don't want it to look bad, otherwise your company is going to look bad. And again, color reproduction is very, very important. You don't want to be misrepresenting the products that you're selling by having poor color reproduction. Color reproduction is very, very important, um, which is why I'm going to talk about some of the stuff I'm going to talk about later on. Obviously, you want um, full color, at least, um, handling inside your template or your star sheet. You don't want RGB. You want at least the MYK um, to represent the colors. Otherwise, you're going to get some um, inaccurate uh, color reproduction. The formatting inside this kind of output is very conditional. You have, often have left or right hand right hand page variations. You have a lot of keeps to ensure that the right pieces of information get kept together. You could have uh, column dependencies, like the information on the left hand column might look different to the information in the right hand column. All this kind of stuff. It's not just based on the um, conditional structures inside the XML hierarchy is based on the formatting output in a lot of cases. Um, and APP is particularly good at handling that stuff because you can interrogate where you are in, in a document, where you are in a page, um, as well as where you are inside the XML hierarchy. And then you can drive all your formatting output based on that, um, that variable information. It's going to look appealing. It's going to look good. Um, there's no point having a very bland, dull, a product catalog is not going to attract people's um, attention. It's not going to draw them into your products. You need to represent them in the best light that you possibly can. So it's got to look nice. Traditionally, this kind of output is um, done using a DPP type application, things like Quark Express or InDesign. But what we're going to be talking about later is also making that type of quality output um, using APP. Um, I like to say that if you can produce stuff manually and you've got a set of rules, and you can write an APP template to um, automate that process for you. The information that's in your um, product catalog is going to be accessible. It's got to be clear. People will be able to find the information that they need um, quickly and easily. 
you've got to have um, layouts which respond to, as I said earlier, the, the page information, the stuff which is coming back in. Um, and those layouts have got to be dynamic, they've got to be, but they've also got to be clear and accessible. Things like beat taps are very important inside product catalogs. Um, they allow people looking through them to find the information that they want quickly and easily. Um, so I don't think I've seen a product catalog that doesn't have some form of beat tabs off the side. Um, and if they don't, then they have a lot of running header information, running footer information, which allows people to find stuff quickly and easily. So those things are important. Um, often those beat tabs are color coded, or they could um, be cut out on the side of the page. All that kind of stuff um, makes the information inside the, the catalog accessible and quick and easy to find. Things like facing pages are also important. In one of the examples I'll talk about later on, you'll see that um, facing pages are sort of formatted as a single page, and they present information across the, the, the facing pages of the of the um, of the catalog. And that gives the user a lot more information. But it's important also to be able to format those facing pages um, together, so you can interrogate the left and right hand pages together. Um, you can make some um, intelligent decisions about where you're going to position stuff on the page. Another thing which is also important as far as layouts is concerned, it's got to be compact. Um, a lot of pages cost a lot of money. Um, so if you can reduce the amount of space that's being used by the information, make sure that the white space that's in there is, is being used sensibly and, and uh, without losing any of the um, readability or the accessibility of the content, then that's um, definitely something you want to focus on. Obviously, as I said, pages cost money, and if you're creating for print run is in the tens of thousands for your product catalog that you're going to be sending out to a lot of people. You're going to be saving as much money as you can by reducing the amount of space that the stuff takes up without um, sacrificing the accessibility. Output is also important. A lot of people will be producing um, PDF to send to their um, to send to their printers. Mostly, this is done using the PDF X standard. PDF X is a um, so it's under the PDF standard, which um, sort of groups together a set of um, properties of the PDF, um, but it, it tends to be focused more towards uh, accurate color reproduction. So you would include things like color profiles. Invariably, you'll be coding the, the uh, colors using the CMYK color model. You want to be producing those PDFs as fast as you can. Um, again. Speed is always very important in producing this kind of stuff. You want information that's up to date going to the printers. You don't want uh, like a three or four month uh, lag between the content coming out of the uh, system and the pages being delivered to uh, the readers because prices may change, product information may change in that time, time frame. So speed is very important. If you can produce it the same day, so that the printers the same day, then that's um, very much something you want to aim for, and that's why automation is important. If you're sending it out to a, a DTP type bureau that's going to put hands on it, they're going to take a long time to produce this kind of thing. Touch up is also one of those things which is going to get you out of jail free. Um, if you spot a spelling mistake or some inaccurate pricing information or a figure that's in the wrong place, a graphic that's in the wrong place, something like that, you want to be able to touch that up at the last minute. You don't want to be having to reformat this document again, you know, go back into the content management system, change the information there, we publish the HTML or the XML, we um, produce a PDF. You don't want to be doing that. You kind of need to be able to open it up in a desktop application and make the changes there and then. Um, that speeds things along, avoids you missing deadlines and all that kind of stuff. So that's a bit something to bear in mind and again that's why HTTP comes into its own and allows you to open up uh, documents in, in a desktop application. I'm sure there are other um, output requirements for catalogs, but from my point of view and in my experience, these are the, these are the main ones, these are the important ones. Um, so let's have a look at some examples of how those things have been used in um, some real life examples. So this um, page is produced by um, a company, a customer of ours in, in Germany. Again, color is very important. They want the accuracy of the reproduction of the color of the graphics, but as well as the branding that's used on each of the pages and those um, flashes across the page there. The gradients in there, 
Now, I can't remember whether these gradients are produced using graphics, but APP does allow you to um, create your own gradients and apply those to um, different objects on a page. These pages are produced using um, CMYK, and you can see over there on the right hand side of the page there's um, like the color uh, color up there, which allows you to ensure that all the codes are being output, um, output correctly. And you can see how they're separated out. Again, this, this is very heavy on tables. A lot of product catalogs is very heavy on tables. We want to be able to put, uh, format those fairly quickly. They need to be dynamic. You need to be able to establish column words um, from the base of the content or using hard coded um, column words in the content. The, the table structures themselves might not be using cows or any of the HTML table models. They might just be um, sort of product information encoded in XML. And you want to be able to create tables from there which are at least as good as um, the tables you can produce by hand. And again, that's one of the areas that APP is very, very good at is producing tables, um, very flexible, very powerful tables. You can do what you like with them. You can um, rotate table cells. You can put backgrounds within them. You can embed tables within tables and all that kind of, kind of good stuff. Um, one of the things about APP's tables is that it's not tied to a particular table model. You have um, some commands inside APP which allow you to start a table, set up the table, start a row, start a cell, um, and set up the, the formatting properties of the rows and the cells. You can apply those commands to any uh, table model you like. You're not restricted to cows, HTML, or any of the sort of other published table models. Um, it's you can think of it similar to the custom table stuff in um, in Styler, but it's um, a whole lot more powerful than that. In this example, gra graphic placement is very important. Um, often the graphics will overlay um, an area of less important text, or the content itself will wrap around um, the graphics. And you can see an example of that when I open up um, ATP later on. The placement is also driven a lot by the content. There's some allowances made, I think, for um, the size of the graphic and the, the uh, content will flow around it. Again, this, this example, you can't actually see it on the page that's being used here, but the table, uh, the printed version of this catalog has got some very nice cut-out blue tabs, and it's very easy to find the information that the customer is looking for inside of the catalog. This um, example here um, is not actually produced in APP, but I did create this um, um, version of this in APP um, during a demonstration process. This is an example of a facing page. And one of the things that um, one of the problems that this customer had was that in order to um, produce the catalog the way they wanted to in another DTP application, they had to produce it as a single page. What um, APP allows them to do is produce it as, a, as two pages. The problem with producing it as a single page is that the printer has to cut or have to break apart the PDF, the two pages. And in, in their um, plate making system, they have to sort of align those uh, sort of broken fragments of the page um, in order to get it to print properly. What APP was, allowed, was able to do was either format it as a single page or break it up into um, two, um, two uh, separate pages, and then but still to maintain that a spanning table that goes across the page. One of the nice things that APP allows you to do is um, tie two, two or more pages together and then sort of format a, a frame of content or a table of content across those um, across those pages which are tied together. Another cool thing that um, APP tables allow you to do is to avoid um, column gutters or page gutters. And so that, that bit down the middle where um, there's some space on the one that actually work. This bit here down the middle, that's avoiding the page gutter, and the APP table can all do that automatically. You can take a make a decision about which columns to put on the left hand page, which columns to put on the right hand page, and it can just format that stuff as if um, as if you put in some empty columns inside the table. Column and row spans are important in this example. You can see the graphics on the left hand side, so that's spanning um, a number of rows. All that stuff had to be taken care of dynamically, and the graphics needed to be sized so that they didn't um, extend too long. We also had to be done, and we also had to um, add a number of blank rows in order to accommodate the graphic if it was going to be too small on the left hand side. 
The information down at the bottom of the page is quite interesting too. That wraps up a particular challenge. The special services, the same thing over there on the right hand side, always have to be in that column. And it was the only thing that was allowed to be in that column. All the other content could fill up according to that, um, according to those rules, but could never overflow into that last column of uh, text there. Again, we have to avoid the, um, the page cutters. The background color on those um, middle four columns of content um, could only apply to those columns of content, and that was a nice, um, a nice thing to be able to do. And obviously, there's some heavy keeps going on inside there to make sure that the right piece of the content get cut together. So that was a nice example, a um, nice challenge. Oh, one of the things that um, we did manage to do for uh, the demonstration that I did for this one is to output um, the columns of the uh, product information table at the top um, according to um, an input variable uh, which I provided as an attribute. So I could reorder those columns uh, dynamically just by changing an attribute value. Um, so, for example, if I wanted to suppress the height column, then I could do that. If I wanted to put the height column at the end, then I could do that just by changing an attribute value. And what this did is um, use one of the features of APP tables, which allow you to specify the output order of um, table columns or the um, which columns to output. And uh, so I could do that without actually changing the content in any way to suppress the columns or Output the columns in the order I specified. That's an, that's an example there. The next one. Get into that place. Oh. Well, this, this company was um, a, a great user of APP. Um, they produce uh, very high volume um, chemical products, um, a number of different products. One of their catalogs, one of the products or projects that I worked on, they had uh, over 40,000 products in a single catalog, and the catalog spanned over 3,000 pages. Each of those products inside there could be linked together with um, cross-references, which is um, a big um, overhead on the formatting process. Obviously, you can see there's a lot of color and graphics involved in here, so they have to be very visually appealing pages. A lot of the um, information inside this company's um, product catalogs always acts as a, a reference book, as a textbook for um, the chemists. And so they'll use that information um, directly from the, uh, the uh, company's product catalog rather than using a, a textbook or a data book themselves. In this example, color reproduction is obviously very important, specific um, colors which uh, assert the brand of the customer and have to be reproduced accurately. So as I said earlier, CMYK color reproduction is very important. Um, and obviously, using uh, PDFX will be important when we get that into APP in version 11 and 10. There's a lot of information bleeding off the edge of the page on these pages as well. So the graphics at the top, the red flash at the bottom, the stuff that, um, all on the right hand side of that right hand page, that all bleeds off the edge of the page and provides the user um, some information of where they are in the catalog. Um, one of the things that APP does very nicely is allow you to pull that um, information off the edge of the page. When I was working on the on the project originally, um, being able to produce compressed layouts was very very important. Um, the blocks of information about a product have to take up as little space as possible, and I hope to be able to show you that in APP. Um, some of the rules which were behind how that information was laid out and how um, APP manages to, um, to assert those rules and produce a very compact layout with a lot of information on the page. Speed is also very important to this customer. Um, it's one of the, my favorite stories that I like to tell. Um, when they uh, decided to go with APP and start um, producing their catalogs using APP, they were using um, another formatting system which everybody knows and loves. Um, and it used to take something like 20 people six weeks to produce uh, one of these 3,000 page catalogs. And by the time we finished the second iteration of the, uh, the APP template, um, it was down to 30 minutes on, on a single desktop machine, um, which was a huge uh, saving in time and um, 
in external cost is uh, I think APP more than paid for itself um, in the first uh, production process. So what else can I say about that? Not an awful lot. So let's move on to um, APP's capabilities and how they um, can address these these requirements. So for those who don't know about APP, APP is um, a very uh, very complex and powerful uh, type setting tool. And so the typographical control that you have over the, over your content is very very um, high. You can control pretty much everything about the text that gets um, onto the page. You have uh, paragraph level controls, um, things like justification, letter and word spacing can be applied. Um, you can have custom uh, hyphenation and justification rules. Uh, one of the features that we added in um, version 11, might be going into 10 or was in the F00 release, was um, allowing you to um, write a JavaScript function to control hyphenation. So the hyphenation engine would hand um, control over to a JavaScript algorithm that you've written. You can analyze the um, input word. You can return um, the hyphenation position to APP's hyphenation engine, and I would break the word according to your rules, that custom rules. This gets around very, very complicated um, hyphenation rules and word breaking rules, which can't be addressed through normal um, hyphenation dictionaries. You might have some compound words which are specific to your um, your market. You might have things like chemical names, which are very, very difficult to hyphenate. You don't want to um, split up certain building blocks of chemical names, for example. So this this uh, JavaScript process allows you to write your own custom rules um, to control hyphenation. APP has already got a pretty extensive um, hyphenation exception dictionary process, which allows you to apply two um, exception dictionaries. But if you can't Handle it in the exception dictionary. You can write your own JavaScript to uh, control it if you want to. Normal fonts come with um, kerning and ligature tables, but if you want to apply um, custom kerning and custom ligature tables, then you can do that kind of thing to get you exactly the output that you want from your fonts. Um, I'm sure you're aware of the combined font feature in this inside um, Styler, where APP's got. A as you would imagine, um, a similar system inside its um, its text formatting engine. I think the difference about APP's um, combined fonts process is that you can pull different characters from different places inside the font and output it in place of another character. So if you wanted to swap all your A's for H's, you can do that and put it from a different font if you want to. I've already mentioned APP's um, tables capabilities. Um, I haven't seen any other application which is as good as formatting tables as APP. It grew up through financial typesetting as well as um, scientific, technical and med medical typesetting. Um, you can nest tables up to 25 levels deep. You can have different alignment types within the same column and I hope to show you some of that stuff later on. Um, you can control the rules around the table as well as the table cells. Um, hugely you can apply I think it's 20 different rules on, on each of those objects. Um, and they can be conditional as well. You can repeat header rows. You can um, have stub columns which repeat when a table breaks um, vertically as well as horizontally. Um, you can apply background colors, and those background colors can be graphics if you want to, them to be, all that kind of stuff. Um, so one of the things that we want to um, add to Styler in the future is uh, more tables control. I think that should be coming in the next major release that we have. Um, some more tables formatting control um, as part of Styler rather than having to have you edit in the actual content and then apply um, formatting properties in the content, which we all um, want to avoid. Again, one of the areas that APP um, excels in, which is particularly applicable when you're producing um, things like product catalogs which go to different countries, is um, APP's language support. APP for a long time, it's had very um, extensive Arabic, um, Chinese, Japanese, and Korean um, formatting support. Things like Ruby, which is up there in the top right-hand corner, um, and that screenshot, which doesn't look like a very good screenshot. I'll do that. Um, and uh, annotation, which is also called Waruchu, where you've got multiple lines of text on the similar line. 
those things are very important in the uh, Chinese and Japanese markets. Arabic is very important to be able to sell that stuff from right to left as well as um, build the characters correctly from the, the, uh, the base characters. Version 11, or was it version 10? I think it was version 10 that added um, Thai formatting support so you can uh, break words correctly in those languages. So you can rest assured that APP's um, language support is very extensive and should address everything that you want it to um, for your multi language um, formatting. When, when I'm talking about multi language formatting, one of the requirements that um, we've come across in the past is that. Um, each page should contain the same information across the different languages. Um, so obviously different languages take up a different amounts of space. One of the things that you can do in um, APP, using APP scripting is um, automate that process. You can then analyze the document, find out where the, where the breaks were in the document, and apply those uh, breaks to um, other documents which are being formatted in different languages downstream. So that's a very nice um, Thing that you can do, um, which makes sure that all your output is consistent and all the same information is on the same pages in, in, your, in your product catalogs. I already mentioned how APP can um, test content structure using XPath um, and you know, query the XML hierarchy. Also mentioned how APP can format uh, can query formatting results. So it can you can test what page type you're on, which column number, what your uh, baseline position is vertically on a page, where you are horizontally on a page. Um, there's over 350 different values of um, stuff that gets returned from um, APP's formatting engine while you're formatting, and you can apply any of APP's formatting controls, either text controls or page controls, um, based on the results of that um, formatting. So it's very, it's almost like an infinite um, number of um, permutations and combinations that you can make of uh, the formatting results and, and typographical page control. You can also test user-defined information. Um, APP allows um, users to create custom dialog boxes and create custom information, whether it's a variable or an environment variable or um, sort of user input into to a dialog box. And you can change your formatting based on that user information, that user-defined information. And that, again, if you're creating a global variable that's inside APP, that can be tested and you can drive your formatting based on those results. APP's page layout um, is very flexible and very extensive, as you can imagine. It's basically driven around frames and layers. Um, frames are basically rectangular content holders that you throw content into. You can have as many text flow um, regions on a page as, as you like. Um, you know, just limited to one. So you can flow content from one one box into another. Um, they can be positioned anywhere. You can rotate them. You can um, have them any size or um, rotation that you like. They also each of those frames can can have other information. You can put uh, rules on the frames you like. You can specify the column configuration of each of those frames. Um, you can put background colors on there. You can apply um, graphics on those frames as well. Um, as you can see on the right hand side there, you've got a some pictures of chairs, which um, form part of the catalog around because those things later on. So those are positioned in frames, which are generated you know, using some inline controls, and the content flows around um, the specific margin around those um, graphics. Those are using uh, clipping paths, which are applied to the graphic, which is a, a nice feature on APP. Each of those frames can be grouped into layers, and those layers you can stack um, however you want um, up on a page. Um, like, I think you have up to 10 layers on, a, on a, an individual page. You can have a total of 400 uh, frames on a page if you want to. Those frame layers can, sorry, can appear either under or over the, the page. Um, maybe he has, he has this um, idea of a, the page layer, which is where all the generated frames get put. So you can put information on top of, underneath there or on top of there. You can combine those layers into um, layer groups, as they're described in the formatting object model. Um, or page definition. Those layer groups um, can be applied conditionally based on the, the content um, using APP's page sequence control stuff, which is kind of similar to the um, XSLFO uh, master page set idea or um, 
APPs, page, uh, not APP stylers, um, paste that idea where you have this idea of uh, what a page definition is, and you can um, call those based on uh, text formatting results um, and apply those in any sequence you like during the page formatting. I've already mentioned color. Um, I'm sorry, I don't have a graphic that goes with this one, so you have to bear with me while talking. APP has got some great uh, color control. You can specify colors using CMYK, RGB, or the HSB color models. We also include Pantone Plus color books. Um, Pantone produces a set of, um, Hello. So, sorry, Simon. This is Janice. I have a question before we get into color too much, which I think refers okay. to your previous slide. So what happens when you tell APP to keep the same content on a page from, from language to language? but the content in the target language takes up too much space to fit into the same page as a source language. Typically, you would format um, each language, find out which one takes up the most space on, on those pages, and then use that stored information to apply some breaks rules when you reformat um, each document again. So you, you basically find out which one takes up the most, the most space, where mm -hmm. the page breaks are in there, um, in that language, and then apply those breaking uh, positions in the in each of the other languages. Okay. Does that make sense? Okay. Yep. <laughs> so yeah, okay. you produce you basically format each each of the languages in turn, and then analyze the information that comes out of it, and apply that um, to the information again as it's going through. Okay. Thank you. So. Yeah, no problem. Um, yes, colors. As I said, uh, CMYK, RGB, and HSB color models are supported. Pantone um, is a, an industry-wide uh, color set of color definitions. They produce these uh, very nice uh, books of color, so grouped together and uh, according to different types of um, paper that you're outputting or different types of colors. Um, if you know anything about producing um, high-quality output, you'll know the name Pantone. A APP and supports the Python Plus color books. Um, so you can choose your color from there. You can put the names color in your PDF that you're outputting so that the printer will know that that's um, a specific color. It's not just using the CMYK or um, values of that color. And so it will know to use the specific Python ink when it's using, when it's creating um, your printed output. As I mentioned, you can also define names colors. And names colors have a specific use um, when you want to put um, separated um, output, color separated output. You can have your names colors on a separate plate if you want to. Simon? Um, or you can, yes? Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, it's you Janice again. We're just not letting you go on to colors, are we? Um, I have no. another question no. from the audience. <laughs> So this particular person says, we don't get localized text until after we construct the English. How would we account for German, for example? After they've constructed the English version of a catalog? If so. Oh, hang on one second. Yes. Or is it the yeah. English version of the content? Sorry? Is it the English version of the content, or is it the English version of the catalog? I think you, you'll be in a little bit of difficulty if, um, if you want to apply different break rules after the, the English version. You can obviously apply, you can take the, the uh, page break rules which have been applied during the formatting of the English version and apply that to any language if you want to, but if, um, if, that, if those languages uh, flow differently, then you might want to go back and uh, reanalyze your English version. So you you got a little choppy. So was it that if your um, if the language flows differently, then what you might want to do is go back and re-review your your the English. Yeah, you, yeah. You can use the English as a as a basis, but obviously mm -hmm. languages take different amounts of space. So you can apply the the breaks which get um, get applied when you're formatting the English to the other li the other languages. But you're going to get some. Um, you're going to get some differences in, in your output. And so you might want to go back, once you've formatted all your languages, you might want to go back and reapply some new breaks to the English just to make sure that everything fits. To compensate after you do yeah. a review. 
Okay. All right. One of the processes which um, you you kind of need to reformat your content uh, two or three times to get everything to settle down properly. Right. Right. So as long as you've got all the content available, it's the sort of thing you can you can run in a single single process and start APP rather than um, having to do all our stuff in manually. Right. Okay, great. Yep. That answered the okay. question. Thank you. Okay, back to colors again. <laughs> well, um, I'm just looking at the time. How long have we got? So that's about 15 minutes. How about 15 minutes? Yeah, I can gloss over color, as it were. Um, so a couple of other things to take away is that you can use um, bitmaps as colors. So bitmaps when I refer to bitmaps, I mean bitmap graphics, uh, raster graphics as they're termed inside APP. You can use that as a color and apply that color to uh, blocks of content like a frame background or a rule, that kind of thing if you want to. You can create color gradients. Um, one thing we don't do yet is radial gradients, but um, we haven't had an awful lot of requirements for that. Normally we just do uh, lateral gradients. Um, one of the thing which is coming in um, APP's version 11 M10 is um, PDF-X and PDF-A compliant um, PDF output. We've had to wait until we could support um, the color profile and output intent stuff which is required for PDF-X um, to uh, be able to do that. We hope to provide that in a, a version 11 F000, but we couldn't, didn't have enough time, so that's coming in M10, which is due out in December. So you'll be able to just select um, the PDF X version or the PFA version that you want to output to. Um, make sure that you've got the other settings um, correct inside your PDF options inside APP, and away you go. You can produce those outputs and send those off to your printer to make sure that um, their color management processes understand the, the values of the colors which are um, inside your PDF. Um, one thing you should know is that CMYK and RGB values don't mean anything unless they've got a context, and those contexts are provided using um, color profiles. They actually give you a frame of reference for where, how you're defining those colors and so that you get actually very accurate um, color reproduction. I've probably already mentioned it, but APP can also output color separations as well um, if you want to. You can specify how those are separated, and you can also include um, spot or uh, name colors in those uh, color separations, so you can do CMYK color plates as well as um, your special green or your special red um, as a separate plate, so that the printers will know to use a different ink for those, um, those types of output. I mentioned a little bit about um, APP's um, control it has over formatting based on uh, variable information, but the automation stuff that's built into, into APP is also very, very extensive and allows you to do things like um, querying the, um, the break positions inside content and reapplying those to other documents. And all this stuff it comes down to APP's um, automation controls. Um, version 10 introduced JavaScript, um, and that's been extended in version 11, and obviously that's where you would start if you're going to write something new, but um, historically APPs use Perl and its proprietary macro language to um, automate these processes. So when I say that um, anything can, that can be done manually can be automated, this is what you're using. You're using a lot of the um, automation techniques, the, um, the scripting and the inline tools which allow you to um, automate those processes. Basically, if you can think of the rules which you're applying as you're building stuff by hand, uh, then more than likely APP has got the tools, the equivalent tools, to um, produce that automatically, and you can automate your formatting process. So you're no longer reliant on um, PTP users um, to build uh, those pages by hand. You can automate that process, saving a lot of money in the process, um, and also removing the human element, which um, can lead to mistakes, um, as long as you can write the code correctly in the first place. The inbuilt engines inside APP can also generate a lot of extra content. Obviously, things like tables of contents and indexes can be um, produced in footnotes. But you can pretty much produce any kind of information that you like and display it how you like. It's entirely up to you to, to build that kind of stuff. 
Um, there are there are tools to generate indexes and footnotes and tables of contents, but there's also um, DOM level two uh, capabilities inside APP now from version 11, which allows you to um, gather information from across your XML content and uh, do something with that, either create a new um, XML DOM inside your document or you know, append it to some nodes inside your document. Um, APP has XML P engine built in. Um, and one of the, the cool things that I can do, and I showed that in another presentation that I, I did for um, Liz and Janice, is that you can apply inline XSLT. So if you have a block of um, information inside your XML that you want to display in a different order or different structure, then you can use inline XSLT to uh, transform that to a structure which is more um, conducive to producing the output that you want to do, and um, then you can output that at the node that you want and create the uh, styling rules which go along with it. So let's have a quick look at APP formatting some content, if I can find the right place. OK, so this is this is one of the uh, chemical catalogues that had um, particularly interesting and difficult um, requirements. Um, we're looking at um, one of their pages here. So each block from the, the gray background heading down to the next gray back, background heading is a single product, and those can be broken down into sub-products. There can be as many of those in there as you like, and each of those need to be, each of those sort of smaller blocks need to be kept together, and obviously there's a, a, a lower priority keep around the, the whole product itself. The information in the gray box on the right-hand side is the pricing information based on the different packaging sizes, and the, the values um, of the price um, could be like hot swapped whenever they they um, wanted to. So you could change the U.S. dollar values for um, like a euro value or a yen value, and all that would change is the the values inside these fields here. So one of the things that APP had to do was um, analyze the the pricing values to figure out how big a gap to leave around that box how much room that box was going to take. That grey box then needed to be positioned in such a way that the content that comes after it um, flows around it. Um, and APP's got a number of different um, features which allow you to do that. You can either put it into a frame, um, you can use paragraph avoiding, or you could use block avoids now, which is a new feature that we added um, to version 11 in support of the side-by-side -side functionality that went into Spire. So the, the black content on the plain sort of white background content flows around it. Um, and this is where things start to get a little bit tricky. All these three columns have to balance within this block, but the columns flow in a different, in a funny kind of order. Up to um, the aluminium content here, um, the columns flow from right to left. So the first bit of information is in the left-hand column, sorry, it flows from left to right. First bit of information is in the left-hand column, then in the right-hand column, left, right, left, right, until the information was too wide. Unless the information was too wide, I'm just trying to find the right bit of the XML so you can see what happens when I reduce the size of the bit of content. So you see where it says residue upon evaporation. If I delete some of that content until there's enough space to pull back up the, uh, the boiling point, you will see how APP reflows that content. So you see how the boiling point came back up into the second column there? All this stuff is happening dynamically. And here you can see a really good example of um, how APP's touch-up capability really helps you produce um, output very, very quickly and easily. I'm editing the XML content here. Over on the right-hand side is an untransformed, unmanipulated version of the XML content that APP got fed at the time. I'm editing that uh, in real time, and I can make some changes to it. So if I wanted to reproduce this PDF page, then I can do that. Um, quickly and easily without having to send it away to an output bureau or reformat the whole document, which you know, would take some time. I can make the change I need to make in here, print the page, and then send that off to the um, output bureau. Once it got down to aluminium, the, the text um, columns format down in the sort of traditional text column way, and they all have to be balanced underneath this, um, this gray area. This is producing a really nice compact layout. It's taking up as little space as possible on the page, and that allows them to save a number of pages um, while they're formatting the document. 
on top of this, gray box could be stacked to graphic. And again, all this content would have to really flow to and format around it. So the nice, uh, very dynamic layout um, had to respond to the formatting controls. In the application that they were using beforehand, each of these uh, areas of content would be a separate um, frame, a separate box. Um, and they would have to all be built in a sort of semi-automated process and then gone through by hand to make sure that everything was formatted in the right position. Those bleed tabs up here in the top left were, um, were dynamically output based on the um, on a key letter in, in the in the content. And I can show you some of that in a different example. So that's one example inside APP. I'm sure you've seen this next example before. I've used it in um, a presentation I've done for Liz and Dennis before. But it's quite um, applicable to this because it's a product catalog. Uh, well, it's a mock product catalog something that I created just to show off a few features inside APP. Not only you've got um, the nice pattern rules, um, APP allows you to define your own pattern rules. Um, you've got a, a nice gradient there. Um, this information is turned on the guides, the page guides. You can see this green line here, this green box shows you um, a frame that's been produced using some inline commands. Turn those off, we can just get in the way. If I add some content here, it makes a few more lines. You can see how the, the tables below, the figures below get out of place, but if I reformat those frames which hold the lower table, the, the lower frames, uh, lower chairs rather, they get pushed down and the content uh, flows around it. This is an example of APP using the clipping path, which is provided in the, um, the source graphic to flow the content around um, the, uh, the pictures of the chairs there. I'm applying a left-hand margin, which is white. Sorry, Simon. Uh, yes. Simon. Sorry, it, it, perhaps it's just me, but are you showing um, these things moving about in a different application than your open APP? I'm not no, seeing okay, yeah, chairs moving. I'm sorry? The, um, what I'm seeing on the screen isn't matching what you're talking about. Do, um, oh, I'm, you still in the the, lower, I'm still in the catalog. The, the pharmaceutical catalog is what I'm seeing. Oh. Oh, and somebody else's too, so I have that confirmed. <laughs> well, you should be seeing. Maybe something's gone wrong then. You should be seeing that uh, blue and white catalog example. So maybe there's a connectivity problem. Okay. If I, switch back to, uh, if I switch back to PowerPoint, can you see that? Um, your PowerPoint? I'm not seeing it. Is some? Or, or is the audience seeing it? Because sometimes my computer's slow. I'm I'm still seeing. No, they're confirming that they're not seeing it. There no, I, think, I think it's interesting that there were some problems and maybe audio is going to slow down, but I didn't see anything about um, the, the visual part of it. Okay, so everyone's still seeing the um, the pharma catalog. Okay, well, I, my screen's moved on a bit since then, so maybe I'll stop, show, I'll stop sharing and restart sharing, if that makes a difference. Yeah, are you, and are you sharing desktop or are you sharing application at a time? I'm sharing my screen. Okay. Let's try this. So is it coming back? So you should see a PowerPoint slide saying APP's position within the object ecosystem. I'm not yet. Nope. And I've got it confirmed from a couple people that they're not seeing it yet either. Okay, I think the um, the sharing's fallen over. Uh oh. Oh, and it was really interesting what you were sharing too, because I know I've seen that before. <laughs> <laughs> Can you select a specific application? Um, Let me try. Sharing? Yeah, try that and see if that works. I'm not sure. If, I don't think it's my end. I think it's the conference systems uh, messed up. Let's try this. Okay, so one thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to change presenters to me. So hang on. And then I'm okay. going to kick it back over to you. And I don't want to show anything on my screen. There's nothing there. So then I'm going to kick this back over. Oh. 
So, Liz, Nothing. for some reason, I can't give him the presentation back. He fell off. Well, nothing's, nothing's changed here. I didn't get a notification that you were taking away the, my presentation. So I'm giving it over to Liz. <laughs> As far as mine is concerned, I um oh. reconnect to the meeting. Hang on a second. Yeah, now we see um Liz's we see Liz's slide, who we are, right? PTC and single sourcing solutions. So while um let me just check that our network hasn't fallen over. Okay. Yeah, I can hear you, Liz. You're quiet, but I can hear you. I think my network's died here. Uh-oh. Yeah, uh-oh. Oh, no. Nothing I've got has got a, a Wi-Fi connection. That's what happened then. Uh-oh. I, I just got a notification saying that we're, we're experiencing difficulties with the audio conference. Yeah, well, I know we were having trouble with your audio earlier. Now your audio actually is much better than it was earlier. Uh, my, my water sound looks tight. So I had one well, question. Well, we may pick up and do more another day. Go ahead, Jeff. I'm afraid to know. So, so I just, if I just uh -huh. say what I was going to say um, about APP's position within the Arbitrax product suite, and people can get the idea, and then my, I'll send you my slides, and they should be able to... Uh... Are you sending your slides okay. over to Liz right now? Yeah, let's do that. Yeah. No, we don't have any... Well, he doesn't have connections, so he can't send it to oh, me. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> what I was going to say is that um, now APP is a composition engine that's part of the Arbitrax publishing engine. You can use um, the ATP engine inside Publishing Engine to uh, format content based on an ATP template rather than just using a style of style sheet. And, you can do and that. when did that, sorry, when, when did that happen? In which version? It happened in 5.4. Um, it okay. came off Technology Studio in, I think it was the M60 release of 5.4. Um, okay. And in, I think the next maintenance release, so the maintenance release after the next, um, we should be synchronized back up again. We had a bit of a, a slight delay between uh, version 6 and APP's version 11, um, but that should be re-synced up in the next couple of uh, maintenance releases. So you should have all the, all the goodness that you need inside the publishing engine, that's in the equivalent of what's inside um, APP standalone. So you, you would develop your um, APP templates in APP desktop, and then you can um, use those um, in place of a .style file or a proxy file inside Publishing Engine to produce output. What that will do is that will uh, load information in, into the APP document, the APP template and format, and generate output. You need to do a few things to make sure that your template um, works inside that environment. Um, for example, you have to expect your main content stream inside APP to be called editor.0, and you have to make sure that your scripting takes into account the automation process which um, APP imposes, um, such as loading that content in, and using the um, print config files to uh, control your output. But other than that, you get access to all of the same capabilities that's in the standalone product inside the publishing engine. You can also tell publishing engine to output um, an APP document to save out a 3D file as we call them, uh, .3D is APP document extension, uh, file extension. If you do that, or you um, save out uh, an APP file from uh, Stylus Print Preview, you can then open that uh, document in your um, desktop application and do the touch-up stuff that I was talking about earlier. So you can sort of fine-tune your output in desktop and then uh, create your, your output, your PDF output from there. So think of APP, the standalone product, as a more tightly integrated version than it was before. Um, think of it, think of the composition engine inside publishing engine, and use that um, as your server product. And we also have server versions of APP if you want to um, 
avoid publishing engines, but going forward, I would recommend that uh, people always use the APP composition engine that's embedded in the design publishing engine. Um, obviously, you can uh, use APP with Styler if you want to, um, and you can use uh, APP source code instructions to extend your Styler output if you want to put in a couple of different uh, features. Say, for example, um, I think I've shown this before in, a, in another presentation. Say you want to put in a gradient color, which is um, inside a template, and use that inside your style style sheet and call that using some source code edits, and you can do that kind of thing too. So that was what I was going to talk about um, with pictures. Um, that's pretty much everything I've got to cover. My next slide says thank you. So thank you for listening. <laughs> uh, some questions. Um, I'll send these, when I get my wireless network back, I'll send these slides on to Liz and Janice to um, share with you guys. Great. Obviously, okay. if, you, if you want to get in touch, feel free to get in touch. I'm happy to answer any questions about APP and any of our products that I look after. We will certainly make sure that they contact you. So thank you, Simon. That was fabulous. You're always good. It certainly Thank looks you, like man. there's um, <laughs> there's a lot of uh, with all that capability. You can it looks like you can achieve pretty much any layout you want as long as you can define the rules that define it. That's the hard bit. Yeah. Defining the rules is the hard bit. The easy bit is making APP do what you want it to do. I remember hearing you say often previously that yeah you don't like thinking that something can't be done, and uh, it looks like the hardest thing is figuring out which feature to use to achieve what goal. Yeah, often you know, we we don't we tend not to provide features to solve a particular problem. We tend to provide tools to solve lots of different problems, and that's that tends to be our development culture um, around the APP. Is provide tools and let people use their own intelligence and their own ingenuity to solve their problems. Great. There we go. See, they are all working on it. That's what they do. Just before we go, I want to take a chance to remind everybody of all the resources available to Arbortext users. All you got to do is go down to the URL at the bottom, and then everything is clickable. You don't have to remember which ones you wanted to to look into. Um, this is just a small list. Really, there's there's tons of things available, uh, and we make sure that everyone uses it. So while we wait for the last bit of questions, I want to thank everybody again for coming to the webinar and make sure you come back next time if you're not already on the notification list or if you want to contact Simon and, and you can just reach us this way and we'll make sure to pass you on to him. Um, we But next time yeah. we've got a panel discussion. Sorry, go ahead Simon. While you're telling people um, where to get information from, I should put out a, a shout out for the uh, community site on the PTC or Planet PTC. Well, I've been writing some blog postings about stuff which is coming inside Silo as well as other other topics. I'm overdue a blog posting on there. I'll try to get to that in the next week or two. But the uh, yeah, been, up yeah. the community on the TTC site is a good place to go to get information. Yeah, Simon's been putting on a post recently about um, Siler on the community site, and it's really very good. We all appreciate uh, making sure that you've got that. It's great. All right. Thanks, everybody, for coming. Next, As I was mentioning, next session is a panel of experts talking about content strategy and making sure that you can achieve your reuse goals. So make sure that you be there. We're going to have a lot of fun. Thanks for coming, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>